We dated for only six months because it's the tradition for the parents, for the elders to get married first. Because he had so many, two more siblings below him waiting to get married. They parked off for about so many years since school days. So one after another will get married after we get married. So it's six months only, you know. What a whirlwind uh, relationship. <laughs> I had always wanted to get married when I reached 40 years old. But, uh, you know, the airline uh, job offered me a lot of opportunities to travel. And when I travel, I meet a lot of girls. But even though, you know, the, there were a lot of girls that uh, came my way, but uh, I was determined to be a one woman man. And so I told the lion and I kept to our marriage. I started to flirt with one of the secretaries, secretaries in the share office. And before long, we were having an affair. She was a married woman. She also has a husband that travels a lot. We got to have a lot of chance to be with each other. I could sense that Peter's feelings was cold towards me. Dreamy, talk less to me, and always listening to his music on the Walkman. But actually the affair was stressing me out. And uh, because the third party also wanted me to divorce Doreen and be with her. But I wasn't prepared to do that because she was also pregnant with our second son. On hindsight, uh, you know, one night uh, I confessed that uh, to her and uh, on the intervention of my mother, you know, I decided that I'll give this another try, give this mention another try, not because of any, for any religious reason, but because I felt it was my moral responsibility. I was appreciative of my mother-in-law who took good care of me and my sons. In, in fact, she's even treated me even better than my husband. She truly, truly loves me so much. Although I was hurting inside, I relent and give in to the marriage. For me, nothing really changed because uh, I was travelling frequently and most time I was away from home. I soon got hooked up with a, a Taiwanese girl and uh, that affair lasted for about two years. It was very tiring. So I gave up that affair and then someone introduced me to a Chinese girl which unfortunately I made, I got her pregnant. So to make things worse, Duri and I were also losing heavily in the stock market. I found out about the affairs and was so devastated, really disappointed me, really tore my heart apart. So enough is enough, one, two and three affairs. So I was ready to, I was, I really lost hope, wasn't uh, in the lot yet. Went around to the kitchen, took a chef knife. I wanted to trust myself, really. Wanted to end my life. But fortunately, he came into the kitchen on time to, to push away, trust away that knife. Or else I would not be here talk, talking to you. But I took, so, in desperation, I went to the temple to seek for help. But they cannot help me. So, I so, there are a lot of temples, in fact. Uh, Tim Chow was doing the sermon and really God broke me down and I accepted Christ. I was really going through a very tough time and so devastated. And uh, like life was meaningless, no hope for me. So I cried every time in church. Anybody asked me, how are you? How are you doing that? I start crying and crying non-stop. But I learned from scripture that God wants us to work through this marriage. And the negative consequences that marriage, that divorce brings, is a woe to me and my family, especially my children. So I made up my mind to stay in the marriage. To forgive Peter is not easy. It's only by God's grace that I can do it. And let, and let God take over and reconcile us. So I prayed to the Lord, who gives me so much love and compassion for my husband. And if love is something that, if you truly love, you can give it away. So I was prepared to surrender my marriage and say, Peter, if you love this girl, go. I will surrender you to her. Don't worry about me. 
And when I give up, and remembering that Corinthians 1.13 it, is what really means love. It wasn't easy. And of course, throughout this time, uh, the church was praying for me. Uh, every week, I attended the uh, prayer meeting with Esther Wong. Yeah. You know, the Lord heard her prayer. But without reason, my Shanghainese girlfriend told me one day how to do that. She wanted to break off the affair. Her, heart, her family were not supportive. Her family, family didn't accept me. I was puzzled because I was her ticket and passport out of PRC. Subsequently, I came back to Singapore for my R&R &R and told Doreen that the affair had ended. And it so happened at the time, COR had a church camp in Pahang. Miraculously, my boss agreed to extend my home leave so I could attend the camp. You know, when I found out that Doreen was going to church, I wasn't angry with her. Even though earlier in our marriage, I insisted that she should never, never become a Christian. But then I also told her that I may come to, you to, to the camp, but I will not follow you to church. I think in the camp, quite a number of the youth and adult members were praying for me. And the Lord moved my heart and I accepted the Lord there. There and then, you know, with no uh, evangelistic outreach, with no uh, class or whatever, I accepted the Lord because I felt that the Lord speaking to me that it's about time I stop wondering. And I remember we went on a marriage renewal retreat uh, organized uh, by the church and where we were asked to write a letter seeking forgiveness from the other party. It was not easy, you know. Though Doreen has already verbally told me that she has forgiven me and she knew about the uh, affairs. It was very difficult for me to express my thoughts and my feeling. I guess it was pride and ego at work that drove me into third party arms. But we prayed together and finally I found it easy to put pen to paper. She also had to put down in writing that she forgave me and both of us had to work and commit to the marriage itself. You know, the retreat ended with both of us being married again under Christian vows, you know. We were married under the traditional way, but now we were married in Chiti. We were married under the blessings of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. I got in touch with him and he, he guided me, he mentored me and he answered some, a lot of the questions that I had. On his advice, he says, give up on temptation. Spend your time, you know, uh, reading the Bible rather than going drinking and karaoke. So I devoted a lot of my night time to studying the Bible. He gave me a Bible. In fact, when I became a Christian, I left for China. I had no Bible with me. So he gave me a Bible and I spent time reading Bible. So uh, both of us did the same thing in Singapore because we knew that uh, knowledge and, the, and living out of His Word can give us direction in our lives. So Peter soon left his China job and together we spent nights and Sundays afternoon pursuing Bible study courses. So, you know, on my part, I decided that serving the Lord is my offering to Him for the many miracles that He had wrought in our life. So, He helped me that when I got busy, especially serving in the children ministry, I got delivered from the sinful life. I had to learn to overlook the faults of the other party and I had to refrain from picking quarrels. Together, Durin and I learned that we need to pray together to overcome the hate, the distrust and the temptation that still work, that was still working in us. We had to rebuild our marriage. I, I learned that God's grace is sufficient for me. I hold on to the Word of God which have helped me to weather the rain and the storm. I trust that God will supply all my needs 
in his glorious riches. And though I'm poor, but he's rich. I'm so rich in Christ, uh, so contented in him. So he says, godly contentment is great gain. I learned to cultivate also through the seasons, the fruit of the Spirit in my life, loving and being compassionate. Above all, I must say, forgiveness is the key. We need to learn to forgive each other because it's God's work. He will help us to forgive, not of our own, not of our own uh, uh, doing or effort, but it's His forgiveness in us. His anointing that flows through us that we could forgive. And by faith, truly remembering the hope in Christ really brings us together again. This is the hope that you see us together here in one piece, husband and wife, with children and grandchildren. With the marriage is not broken after three disappointments. It's really the work of God in us. And I, I agree. And I just thank God for using me as a vessel during that season to work out my utmost for His highest. It's really not easy. Yes. You know, the Lord has to be the center court in the threefold court marriage. And if He's made the center court, eh, then the marriage can survive, can last. So I want to encourage those of you who are hurting or struggling in your relationship to learn to forgive your spouse even if you are not together now let it go and, Lord, and let our God, our Lord bring healing to you and your marriage and never stop praying